Kathy Hanson. Hello there. Well, nice to see you. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice to see you. Hello there. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Lisa Dukin. Hello there. Nice to see you. Good morning. Hello there. Well, nice to see you. Thank you. Mr. President. Hi. How are you? And then you know that you're sad. <laughs> well, sir. Uh, well, Listen. Good news, you look wonderful. Well, I feel good. Okay. Yes. Oh, oh, now, nice. look what we brought you. Very happy and safe. Yes. Very yes, Santa Claus. Well. It's the American Love Association. And you and I, I particularly, and we're so happy because you're going to let us uh, have more power by opening our long association month of November. We open yes. the officials throughout yeah. this country. And I mean, I've been moving. Well, listen, I know you have, yes. and I think it's just great. And I think what all of you are doing, the association is doing, is wonderful. And just to, at least to. You got something else for you. That works for real. You got something else for you. Oh, yes. Well, I don't go empty handed. <laughs> no, indeed. Okay, Robin. Okay, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. Christmas seals. I saw yes. you put on your presents. Yes. Now, this is for Mrs. Reagan because oh. Mrs. Nancy Reagan, bless her heart, she is our honorary chairman for the Anti Marijuana Association. And that lady of yours has done some job. I know. And she is some lady. Well, that over there. She thinks that of you, and I'll be very pleased to deliver it. She Louis, said her very best regards. This, yes, she did. Louis wrote your poem. No, this is Pearl present. <laughs> no, no, no. That's my own Christmas present. No. One for you, one for her. And while I was at the Lone Association, we thought of something. And that one scarf, but I thought maybe you might get a little chilly. So we put together eight. <laughs> Oh my goodness, who put the pin in here? Oh my goodness. Let me see, I'll get it out. Um, can you see Ben I can't <laughs> 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 Let's see now. It won't take up the time, but they pin. You know how the people that help you and they over help? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look what we put together. Eight scarves. And these eight scarves and we have made you. In fact, Pearl for this. Road. For heaven's sake. <laughs> be. And that's what our American Law Association. Yeah, let me pick up that no. belt. I can't put that on without a belt. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. It can be done. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Well, now, I'm almost empty handed. I just wanted to look, <laughs> token of my appreciation to the Law Association and. Uh, Start the contributions off. Oh, uh, I feel I'm almost empty-handed in the face of all of this. No, you are not. You, uh, you're not empty-handed, and by the grace of God, mm -hmm. you're not empty-hearted either. I, for one, know it because I've known you a long time, yes, you and, and you are the same man who always tried. I have it turns out you try. Would you have a picture? Mr. President, I want you all to join us. Yes. Over here yes. With a group with you and Miss Bailey in the center. Okay.
and gentlemen, the President of the United States. How are you? Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, I, let me first say how glad we are to see all of you here, but I imagine several others have said that already. I know what busy schedules you have, and I'll bet you one of you here wins the medal for being coming from the farthest distance. California? <laughs> are you, Dennis? Uh, but we certainly appreciate your taking these two days to come to Washington and to be briefed on the desperate situation of world hunger. All of us share a deep interest in resolving this tragic crisis that one so staggering it eclipses all others. And we're giving it our highest priority and we'll continue to do so. Our administration has already provided an unprecedented level of emergency food aid. A tremendous amount of food has been delivered to Ethiopia and other suffering countries, and much more is on the way. Just an hour ago, we announced two more steps, the release of 300,000 metric tons of wheat from the U.S. Wheat Reserve and the granting of an additional $50 million in food aid to be made available immediately to those African countries in greatest need. But solving this crisis is beyond the efforts of the United States government and the American people alone. Ending world hunger will require a combined effort of the public and private sectors in productive countries like our own. It will also require fundamental changes in those countries suffering from famine, a new path leading away from government regimentation and toward greater freedom and incentives for individual citizens to produce more. I called at the beginning of my administration for a new partnership between our private and public sectors. And I have to say the result has been just amazing and confirmed what I've always believed, that the people of America, if you just tell them what's needed and point them at it, uh, it gets done. Well, this is an emergency situation where we must put such a partnership to work immediately. I know some companies have already been deeply involved, and I'm told they received awards last night for their work. But I've come to make a direct appeal to all of you. We need your help. We need your time, your expertise, and yes, your capital investment. We need all this in helping to alleviate the short-term crisis, and we need it even more in addressing the long-term problem, as this is indeed a long-term dilemma. There are many areas where you can help to bring about needed change. Building the required infrastructure in the affected countries, such as improved transportation from port to interior, bringing sorely needed management skills to these developing economies, enhancing their food production and food processing sectors, and by your successful business practices, helping to encourage the necessary long-term economic reforms. In the end, after all, it will take a freer economy in those countries to meet these grave human problems. We face a tremendous challenge. And I thank you for coming and for giving us your pledge to help all you can. When Americans stand together and work together, that's when miracles begin to happen. So let's roll up our sleeves and get the job done. I know that some of the things our own people who've been there in Africa and Ethiopia have told of, and maybe you've been informed, that even uh, regarding the, the great amounts of food that we've mentioned here, these literally can only be de delivered to those people who have rallied and made their way to certain dispersal centers. But because of the lack of infrastructure, lack of transportation and roads, out there in the out country, there are many millions of people for whom nothing is being done uh, there's just no way to even find and, and locate them. But I recall an America that when there was an earthquake that destroyed Tokyo, an America when it was Belgian relief, and when it was a government that just simply said to the people, here is this problem, and all of those things 
seem to be taken over and we're done with the private sector. Well, we're a little better in the governmental level now than we were then, and we can do some of the things that I've suggested. But also, I think the real effort, and government doesn't have resources to match it, is when we suddenly call on all our fellow citizens to rally around and alleviate this suffering and this terrible tragedy that's going on. And uh, then I know that there are other things. We've already, in some countries, uh, had success in getting teams of our agricultural experts and our farmers to go and help them find out how they can have something of the kind of food production that we have in our own country. Well, all I can say is thank you all very much for being here, for considering this, and God bless you all. Well, I just dropped by to say thanks. I, particularly during the campaign, I was getting out the sun on the net, but uh, sometimes there wasn't any bedtime. And I just wanted to thank you, Tony, how much we appreciate it. Many times that was the only news I was getting and, uh, or had time for. It. So I do appreciate it. And if those losing those hours of sleep give you too much trouble, just come over to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> we have one more person who is actually works night, Bruce Wilmot, who's not here, sir. And he'll miss uh, meeting you. Sorry we missed that. We just wanted to show you these are the products that you're familiar with that we do, of course. Yes. We hope you enjoy the Friday Follies. We've never pulled punches on that. I, uh, no, I have to tell you that someplace I've got to check up on uh, someone in the distribution end because I haven't been getting this one. We're going to talk to your secretary. I don't see this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're going to take that you, you haven't been getting Friday Follies this morning? Huh? You haven't been getting the, no. the cartoons? No. Well, let's see. I like cartoons. <laughs> I start the day reading the comics. <laughs> Right. We get about 100 newspapers every day in here. We file about uh, 45 or so of them. We thought this might look like a familiar headline to you. We hey, the saved over. an evening telegram. And uh, this is sort of a, that was a nice one we thought we'd like to see again right. anyhow, in the top three. And um, how, how rude am I going to be, sir, if I ask you to <laughs> sign that for us? Sign I appreciate it. Without recourse. Without recourse. Without recourse. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you, sir. I have one more thing to show you this way, if we can, and uh, that's a little bit of the uh, operation. We transfer that to this, which is known as a grid, and as the White House News Summary has done especially for us, and then through um, a system upstairs and through the uh, White House operators in Walker, we transfer directly to where you are, the rest of China or wherever, and it goes to you in a matter of, a matter of minutes, which is quite a step up. Mr. President, you know, they were doing virtually hour, hourly updates while we were on the campaign trail, the little sheets we had handed yes, you got no. that had the headlines on it, and that was coming through this and right into the Waka spot by the speech site, you know. You were getting well, that. Yes, I knew I was a little puzzled how to finish a speech someplace, and all of a sudden I can almost still hear them clapping, and they hand me uh, what the press is saying about <laughs> the speech. Uh, that primarily is it. We do some other things, but not terribly important. Uh, it's just such a great honor for all of us to serve you. Well, it's deeply grateful for all of you. Thank you. And uh, being from Des Moines, Iowa, I worked at the Des Moines Register one time, and you came in there, and uh, back from the days in the movie star days, and the first time I was ever on radio was WHO in Des Moines. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> and the Des Moines Register had its own radio station. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again, sir. Well, 
itself is a result. It's the result of too much spending. So we're trying to attack that. If I could just throw some statistics at you that I gathered in myself about this thing of the part the spending plays in this and contributing to the deficit. And that the increased spending over the years has been counterproductive, not only economically, but counterproductive with regard to what it was supposed to do. From 1950 on up into the 60s, the rate, or the, the, there was a decrease in the percentage of people living below the poverty line. And then in the late 60s, Johnson's <coughs> War on Poverty, the Great Society, was passed and took place. And actually, it started reversing the decline in the percentage of people living below poverty. That began increasing. And under the previous administration, it was increasing at the rate of about 9%. We have cut that almost in half since 1981, that rate of increase, but still increasing. 
Now, from 1965 to 1980, the budget increased to about four and a half times what it was in those 15 years. But the deficit increased 38 times what it had been in 1965. So again, I said that we say the villain is spending. And we, I think that this is, this is an, an emergency time and it's a moment in history when, if not us, who, and if not now, when? <coughs> corral this and get it back. So this, and we, we also are pledged to the simplification program and taxing, but we would, don't want to get into there with our opponents. We don't want to get into a, a trade-off type of thing with them and, a, uh, and their tax increase ideas. So both of these are top priority, but we want to go with this first, the budget matter first. And we've taken one of your suggestions with the idea of encompassing it in a framework of degrees, as you will hear when Dave gives you the, <coughs> the report. The, well, I'll save some other things for the discussion that we'll <coughs> then have when Dave is finished. And uh, I was going to be asked in the first part of the meeting have been having been through all of this, but it, I overcome my, or overcame my distaste <coughs> hearing grown men cry. <laughs> <laughs> I decided to join you for the whole meeting. Dave, <coughs> nice to see you. I know we're a little late getting across the street. We've been whittling at the budget in here, and it was like playing overtime. <laughs> well, listen, I'm pleased to do it. I'm looking forward to the ceremony. We have a, just a little souvenir for you of this year. To the, Oval Office. Thank you very much. Yeah, George Bush. Nice to see hey, you. Sir. Is Father Monin with you? Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, He's with me and uh, my coach, Coach McNeil, and my family. <laughs> We're all kind of excited, <laughs> to say the least. Well, shall we all go across the street where we're supposed to go? All right. Our daughter went to BC, Dorothy, so I want to see Father Monin. It's a great thought.
has called your policy in South Africa evil, immoral, and totally unchristian. What do you, what are you going to say to him to change his mind? I think this should be the best answer to the question, Andrea, but more than that is later. Will we be able to talk to you later, sir? Yes. When? Much later. Do you think you can change his mind? I've always believed that when people talk to each other instead of about each other, they won't get along just fine. Thank you. They talk to each other, and I appreciate it very much for speaking. Mr. President, do you believe that Iran is collaborating with those hijackers? Thank you. Let's look at the camera. We're going to have some time. I'm afraid you may be right, yeah. That's good. Scans?